22-year-old man with a suspected peritonsillar abscess immediately following the IV injection of 80 ml Iohexol 300 contrast media for his neck, he becomes tachypnic. He subsequently develops wheezing, difficulty breathing, repeat, uh, repeated coughing, and complains of pressure and tightness in his chest. Already you know that this is a more severe contrast reaction than the previous case. And if you're like most of us, your heart rate probably has jumped and your hands may get a little shaky as the adrenaline uh, jolts. Um, just remember to take a few breaths as you walk to the CT room to calm yourself before you evaluate the patient. And again, the first step is triage, so you want to assess the patient. Talking to the patient will help to determine if they're oriented to name and place. If they're having any difficulty breathing, can they speak in full sentences or are they having to have gas for breath between their words? If they're coughing or struggling to get air in, they may be experiencing inspiratory strider and therefore upper airways um, edema. If they're wheezing or having trouble getting air, air out, it would be suggestive of bronchospasm. Or if they're just short of breath without inspiratory or expiratory um, symptoms, it may reflect congestive failure or non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. You want to maintain um, an airway if necessary and check their pulse as well as blood pressure and pulse oxygenation. Again, determining the type of reaction is helpful. In this case, you're dealing with an allergic-like reaction. And anytime you're evaluating um, respiratory distress, the first thing you want to do after you determine if they have an open airway is how quickly are they worsening or if they are worsening or not, the severity of their respiratory compromise. After you've obtained their initial pox, pulse oxygenation, you should provide supplemental oxygen by face mask at 6 to 10 liters per minute, and then reassess that intervention if it's been um, a positive or an absence of improvement after the oxygen has been provided to the patient. These patients with shortness of breath are typically very anxious. They may say that they are drowning or feel like they're drowning. They are short of breath and have chest tightness, sometimes even chest pain. Um, moderate reactions, as we discussed before, don't commonly occur, but when they do, bronchospasm can be among the symptoms. Severe bronchospasm, though, fortunately, is very rare. Asthma, though, history of multiple allergies and therapy with beta blockers do increase the risk of bronchospasm. So bronchospasm or wheezing is a common manifestation of respiratory illness. We typically know about it from asthma. It's the most common um, type of, of uh, disease that would cause wheezing. And it results from airways narrowing and obstruction from um, mucosal inflammation, bronchial smooth muscle constriction, and increased intraluminal secretions with or without pore clearance. And it can result in diffuse scattered airflow limitation and wheeze. Um, in the pathophysiology of the changes in airway resistance induced by iodinated contrast media remains obscure and is presumably multifactorial. The underlying mechanism may involve the release of bronchospastic mediators such as histamine, endothelin, and prostaglandins, and bradykinin, among others. Contrast media can cause release of histamine, which is a potent bronchoconstrictor from mast cells and basophils, both through a direct effect and indirectly by activating the complement system. The role of endothelin in mediating bronchospastic effects of iodinated contrast media has been investigated, and endothelin is a potent smooth muscle constrictor which in the lungs produces an increase in vascular resistance and marked bronchospasm. So here we have an algorithm, you have a trigger factor, in this case it would be the contrast molecule, and it leads to airways inflammation with some degree of either mucus production, airway muscle tightening, swollen bronchial membranes. Those come together to narrow the breathing passages and cause the symptoms of wheezing, cough, and shortness of breath. Here we have a diagram on the left is a normal lung and normal airway, and you can see the airway lumen is widely patent. There's no secretions or mucus. And on the right, we have an inflamed lung with a very thickened mucosal membrane, some mucus and its secretions inside the lumen, and narrowing of the airway by bronchial smooth muscle constriction. So what does bronchospasm sound like? It's been described as a continuous, wheeze has been described as a continuous musical sound that can be produced by oscillation of opposing walls of an airway that is narrowed to almost closure. Usually it's high pitched and more common in expiration. And they can originate from airways of any size, but what we are dealing with an allergic like bronchospasm, it causes intrathoracic or lower airway changes and expiratory wheeze. So I have an example of what bronchospasm sounds like. Ooh. 
So I'm not sure what sort of music the author who described it as musical was listening to, but uh, it does have sort of an oscillating pattern. The gasping sound is when they're taking air in, and then the longer wheeze sound is when they're trying to, expi or to, to expel the air and just not able to get it out through these narrowed airways. And that's in distinction to strider, which we'll hear more about later. But just to touch on, in, that is an inspiratory sound. It's associated with hoarseness of breath and new onset voice change. And that results from upper airways edema. And so it's important to distinguish those two because the treatment algorithm differs. For the management of moderate to severe bronchospasm, obviously maintaining IV access is important. If the patient seems to be um, not responding to your treatment or is in danger of um, becoming markedly hypotensive, you want to put in a large bore IV into the antecubital fossa if all they had was a peripheral small caliber IV. Um, supplemental oxygen should be administered in all cases at 6 to 10 liters per minute by face mask. And then an albuterol or a beta agonist inhaler. So in the crash carts, usually it's albuterol, but it could be a different preparation in your institution. But two puffs, and that can be repeated up to three times. If you have a spacer in your um, crash cart, that help is helpful to more optimize the delivery of the medication into the lungs. And if you have a nebulizer treatment, that's even better if that's available to you and, and your, yourself and your uh, staff is aware of how to work that. If the patient isn't uh, responding to these treatments with improvement in their symptoms and in their pulse oxygenation status, that's when you would need to look into doing uh, a dose of epinephrine. And in most cases for bronchospasm, you're able to give the IM dose um, because they're usually perfusing you know, adequately. So the intramuscular dose would be easiest with the EpiPen if that is available in your crash cart. And if not, it would be the 1 to 1,000 um, dose for the intramuscular or subcutaneous uh, injection. And you would pull up a 3 cc, uh, 0.3 cc's into your TB syringe and only pull up what you're going to use in the first dose. Sometimes if you pull the entire vial up at once, you may be tempted or nervous and give the entire amount at once and you want to avoid that. So pull up only what you need at a time. If you have a patient that becomes profoundly hypotensive and you would need to do IV epinephrine, that's the 1 to 10,000 dilution and you would administer that slowly through a running um, IV line. Um, and you can repeat both of those doses up to three times in the, um, in the IV, IM dose. And again, if you're considering giving epinephrine, that's probably the time to call either a rapid response or a code if you're in the hospital setting or 911 in the outpatient setting. If you have any fear that the patient may deteriorate rapidly, it's better to have additional help at hand um, or if the completeness of the response is not sufficient. So here are some pictures of epinephrine and albuterol. These are from the, uh, the contrast cart that you have, the little ampules, the glass ampules of the 1 to 1,000 intramuscular dose. And this is the EpiPen. First, you would take off the blue um, safety cap, place the orange um, portion onto the skin, or to the thigh of the lateral upper thigh, and press, press it hard until it clicks and hold for 10 seconds. This is the Ventolin or the albuterol, and this is when it's connected to the meter dose inhaler. It allows for more optimal delivery for patients and then this is a nebulizer if you have that available to you. So in conclusion for this case, this is an allergic-like reaction and moderate to severe depending on how he responded to our treatments. And the best treatment option in his case would be to maintain IV access, provide oxygen by face mask at 6 to 10 liters per minute, albuterol inhaler two puffs and can repeat that three times, if necessary epinephrine IV or IM, and observation in the department uh, for at least 30 to 60 minutes, ensuring that all symptoms have resolved prior to discharge. And if necessary, escalate the level of care by calling a rapid response or a code or 911 if you're in the outpatient setting. And then chart documentation of a moderate or severe contrast allergy should occur so that they are aware in the future, including the type of contrast the patient received um, and what the reaction was. Next, we'll be having uh, turning the, the speaker over to Dr. Jay Pahati from Yale, and he'll be speaking to us about the next two case scenarios.